can you really get enough potassium if you're doing carnivore? Well, let's go into it. First, I want to explain a little bit about how potassium works. Potassium is not the most abundant mineral in the body. Calcium is because calcium is stored. But potassium is the mineral that you need the most out of any nutrient as far as a daily amount. You need like 4,700 milligrams a day. That's a lot. So why do you need that much? Because potassium is involved in something called the sodium potassium pump. And that's in all of your cells. It's a pump that allows the contraction and relaxation of your nerves. Not to mention the fluid inside and outside the cells. Let's talk about if you have too much potassium or too little potassium. Okay, So too much potassium, the word for that is called hyperkalemia. That's too much potassium. Not enough potassium. That's called hypokalemia. So what you need to know about both is that it's very rare to have any symptoms, even if you have low or high, unless it's like extreme. Most of the potassium, like 98% of it, is inside the cell. There's a lot of factors that can uh, make it even lower in the blood, even though they're measuring only 2% of it. Uh, what are the symptoms for low potassium versus high? If you have high potassium, you can have diarrhea, low potassium, constipation. So with high potassium, you have more muscle pain or muscle numbness. But with low potassium, you have more muscle cramps and just an overall tiredness. So you can imagine, like, especially if you exercise, like you need potassium to allow things to work. It's going to help your performance. And if you don't have enough, you can feel kind of weak and kind of tired. And just as a side note, one of the causes of low potassium is low magnesium because they work so closely together. All right, so what would cause a high level of potassium? Well, mainly it's going to be kidney disease it's because the kidney can't get rid of the potassium, and so it just builds up in the body. It's extremely rare to develop too much potassium in the blood from dietary potassium or even taking supplements of certain blood pressure medications, and it can also be a side effect of an adrenal condition called Addison's, which is a condition where your adrenals just aren't working. And you have this hormonal problem where you're retaining more potassium and you're losing a ton of salt. This is why people with Addison's disease need to take a lot of salt. So in other words, the more potassium you have, the less ratios of sodium you're going to have. And so typically we need a two to one ratio, like two times as much potassium as sodium. We need both, but we need the right ratios. Now what's interesting is one of the side effects from taking too much potassium is diarrhea because it creates like a laxative effect. Diuretics are a common cause of low potassium. Steroids are another cause of low potassium. Another interesting cause is a crush injury. So you have this injury where you have trauma, you, you lose a lot of potassium from that. Hallucinations and depression are a common cause of low potassium. In fact, when you get a surgery, the requirement for potassium goes up too. Now that you know a little bit about potassium and the need for potassium, most people think that potassium only comes from plants. That's not necessarily true, but you do get a lot of potassium from plants. Like for example, beet leaves, one cup has 1300 milligrams. Beet leaves are loaded with oxalates as well. And people don't normally consume a lot of beet leaves. Um, you also have Swiss chard, which also has oxalates. That has like uh, over 900 milligrams per cup. Then you have spinach, also high in oxalates, 840 milligrams of potassium. Avocados have between 500 and 700 milligrams of potassium. And actual beets have like 520 milligrams per cup of potassium. And then you have also just regular salad. You can get a good amount of potassium. It's usually between 350 to 500 milligrams per cup. So if you're doing several cups, you're going to get a good amount of potassium. And I don't recommend getting your potassium from bananas because it's high in sugar and you only get like 300 milligrams per banana. So what about this carnivore diet? Where are you going to get your potassium? Well, bone broth. One cup of bone broth can give you 500 milligrams of potassium. That's just one little cup. Three and a half ounces of beef can give you 350 milligrams of potassium. Three and a half ounces of octopus can give you like 650 milligrams of potassium. Three ounces of salmon can give you 300 milligrams of potassium. Now realize you're probably consuming more than three ounces or three and a half ounces of these animal products. One large egg is about 63 milligrams of potassium. 
Three ounces of beef liver will give you about 125 milligrams of potassium. And even three ounces of chicken can give you about a little over 300 milligrams of potassium. And so I hope I sufficiently answered that question. And since we're on the topic of carnivore, if you have not seen my video on the benefits of consuming beef, you should check it out. I put it up right here. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.